Okay, so this is, I have two different ones. I have the one that I'm working on and then I have an old painting. I can also demo some different colors for you guys to look at. Um, if you watched the first video, you saw that I was planning out some different color swatches here and trying to kind of work my way up to what does it look like if I just put the watercolor up to the next color edge when it's completely dry and then what happens if I kind of fuzz over that, all right? So if <clears throat> we're trying to separate colors on here and I wanna do some testing, I've already kind of wet my paints and set that up. Red was the color I was struggling with because it looks pink when you add water and I want it to look nice and bold. So what I'm gonna do is put some yellows and oranges underneath it. Um, some of you are using yellows, okay? So I'll talk a little bit about yellow. Um, stick with where you have um, put the heaviest line weights and you kind of want to trace through the vein parts of the leaf like this and create like a light color base. Whenever you're painting, it's always a really good idea to start with your lightest colors and then you work your way into the darker ones. Light colors are very difficult to overlap on the darks, but dark colors will very easily overlap on the lights. All right, so just remember that. A lot of times, unless they're really wet, leaves don't have a shiny glare of white space like right here. So it might be best if later I just blend that in. But for right now, I'm kind of just tracing around the veins and then letting the color expand away so I kind of leave a little bit of paper space in the center trying not to go into my background I pulled just a little green in there on accident and I always leave white paper space to blend just something I've learned over time okay um, if you work through your first color and then kind of look back, like right here, it doesn't look quite as shiny, but you need to let that shininess go away. Do you guys see the reflection on the paper? That reflection is going to be the clue that you need to back off. Otherwise, if you touch that, it's gonna start running in with your next color. If you're really antsy and impatient, you might actually get out a hair dryer or just work on a different area. You could bounce around and start now working on a different leaf while this one dries, just so that you can work faster through this. Um, you can also use different colors. You can kind of see how I've experimented a little bit. The other thing is I know that some of you are using blues and purples. Those are very unnatural leaf colors, but it doesn't mean you can't use them. They might be a lot of fun. So again, with whatever my lighter color is, I'm gonna start going around some of those um, dark edges. And I'm using the lines in the leaf to make a pattern of where I'd like to start my painting. Okay, so even if it's gonna be like a bold dark blue, in the end, you should start with lighter. And then those little puddles, you can kind of just blend out more. I'm not gonna do too much of this. I just wanna get you guys started here. I'm also um, working on something else while I let this dry, okay? So you can kind of bounce around the composition just a little bit. You can also take the same color with a little less water like this. But again, if it's not dried enough yet, you're gonna have a, a little running and bleeding into effect. Okay, but you can also start to just show a little bit of value. But look at that, that's a really, um, that's a good spot to show you because if I don't control this, it's gonna start going everywhere. So if you're a little unsure of yourself, hold off for a minute or two and let it dry. And that way before you keep going, um, you will be able to separate your colors a little bit better. Okay, let's go back to the yellow leaf now. 
So now I wanna start building that up and I wanna add some orange, okay? And I've experimented with the oranges I have available. I kinda like that nice bold dark one right away. And I'm gonna look for parts of the painting that are not wet and shiny anymore. Be careful, um, I almost just put my arm in what I was letting dry. So watch what you're doing and then I also notice I have a little bit too much liquid on my brush. I'm gonna get out of control a little faster that way. Okay, now, the orange over the yellow is actually really subtle. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab more paint, but I don't wanna add any more water, okay? And then I'm just gonna start with like a really small section like this. That's a little risky. It looks like it wants to go, but it's also behaving itself and staying in place. So now what I'm gonna do is to blend that. I take and I clean my brush off in the water and then I'm gonna use a paper towel. Right now I just have a piece of scrap paper, but I want to clean my brush, but not have it soaking wet, okay? Think of the wet brush that has no more paint on it as kind of like a blender and you can very gently blend that orange into the yellow if you use like a really gentle pressure. And then, while it's all still kind of wet, you can take some extra yellow now, fill in that little gap, and use the yellow into the orange. And I know there's a glare, but when I lift it, do you see how I'm able to separate colors now? Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start adding red, but I can't do it too soon, okay? So I've gotta let this dry a little bit. Right now, I'm gonna start going into other parts of the leaf and add that orange. And then again, as you get, as your color gets darker, you're gonna to have to experiment on a little scrap of paper so that you can start to learn what you need as far as balancing the amount of paint and the amount of water to get the desired effect. This is something that takes practice, guys. It doesn't just happen the first time you do it, okay? I'm a really big advocate of technique practice in art. I think that, you know, personally, I feel so much more comfortable doing something on what I would term a final paper or drawing if I've had a chance to practice it. Okay, so now I'm gonna just very carefully pull that orange in and then I'm gonna go back to my yellow and let the yellow, oops, that's kind of heavy. Okay, so if that happens, just blot your brush, get rid of some of the liquid. And then you're gonna take that color and don't push real hard on the paper, okay? Do you see how I'm getting a blend now? Okay. Now I really wanna add red, but it's kinda soon. I'm gonna go back to the blue one for like some of you who are trying blue colors, okay? So now, again, once my blue is dry, I can go in and darken with another layer. And I try to keep my darks towards the veins and let the lights kind of travel outwards towards the center of each one of the shapes that those make. Okay, so now I want to get a little bolder and add some purple. So I kind of test it out. What does that look like? Because I also have two different purples. And this one looks, I don't know if I want a purple that's so bright. So I'm gonna try the other one I have too. Let's see if that one's any better. This one might be more blue and more dark looking. Yeah, but I like that purple better. 
Okay, so if you have choices, check them out first before you do it. Okay, so now in my dark areas, I can take, and I'm real cautious with the purple because it's a really dark color. This is a little wet in here, but I'm just going slowly and trying to use like the point of the, the paintbrush here to add a little purple. And I'm gonna add more of it along the bottom edge. If it's a darker color, I wanna think about where the leaf might appear darker. Okay, now I'm gonna rinse my brush. And then I think I'm gonna grab a, I'm gonna blot it with a Kleenex or a paper towel. And now I'm gonna get it just, just a little water. Okay, I already cleaned all the purple off. But now I'm gonna work on just very gently moving that purple inwards. And then if I feel like I'm starting to get too far in, I might go back to that blue and put more of that blue in there. But now it looks heavy, so I rinsed my brush and now I'm just kind of fuzzing the color a little bit. And I've lost a little bit of my light areas. Come on, camera, focus. But do you see how I just blended that in, you guys? Okay, so if you're having trouble blending a dark color, grab the light one on your brush and use it to help you fill in the gaps, okay? Because even as I try to pull this purple inwards, using that light watery blue is gonna be a lot more helpful. Okay, so watercolor takes practice. If you take my suggestions to heart, I think you'll do a lot better than you think, okay? But you gotta really like, you may have to watch this video again and you may have to mess up on one of your leaves to do a really good job on the next one.